Hatch review. I haven't been here the last couple of days because I went to Georgia for New Year's and it was Christmas and family comes first in my life, so I'm sorry I didn't post, but I'm back. New year, new grind. I'm gonna stay on the grind. I'm gonna keep you guys entertained with new content and teaching you guys new shit. If you like my videos and you like my channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It helps me speed up the process of me going full time. When I go full time, I wanna host tournaments, I wanna host camps, I wanna have a wrestling club and I'll vlog them and like, I got a lot of stuff. I wanna vlog my MMA training. Um, I wanna fight in MMA. And the quicker you guys get me exposed to like the outside world, then the quicker I can do that and bring you guys this content. And trust me, it'll be sick. So smash like, smash subscribe, share my video and shit. But today in match review, if you guys don't know what match review is, basically you guys email me your wrestling matches into the email, like it's the first thing that is in the description. You just have to share it on Google Drive or email it to me or do something with it. Send me the full match. I want full matches. I don't need a five second clip of you pinning someone. Or like, you know what I mean? I need full matches to review. I need to have like, things to critique. And basically, I review them. So, today we got a freshman from, uh, I don't know where he's from. He's a 170 pounder, and he looks pretty good, but he's got a he's got a few things to fix before he can call himself a high quality wrestler by my standard, okay? So, let's just, let's just jump right into this, guys. Good stance, that looks like a good stance. Okay, right here. All right, first things first, off the whistle, the first thing you do is you straighten your arm out. Now this is very, very bad because a good wrestler will use this as a cue to post and shoot, right? You like It's really easy when your elbow's straight to push it up, all right? You wanna keep your elbow at an obtuse angle, preferably under 170 degrees. That means this angle right here should be under 170 degrees at all times. That means like right about here, right? It should be like right here. Because if you straighten it, then um, they can post up real easy. But if it's bent and they try to post up, you can just straighten it out. You know what I mean? And you can still get your thumb under their shoulder to stop a shot. You never lead into someone with your arm straight. This is a very, very bad habit. And when you wrestle someone good who is used to, who has gotten that cue down pat, like who knows when I see that elbow straight, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna do my thing, you will pay for it and it's gonna suck. Okay, so just get out of that habit now. You're a freshman, you got plenty of time to drill, going up to someone like this and not like this, all right? So, oh wait, what was that? I didn't even see this before but you cross your feet right here and that is very bad. Never ever cross your feet. If you see someone crossing their feet first time, then take note of it, all right? And then when they cross their feet the second time, shoot on them. Like that should be an instant cue for level change and shot, like power shot, because you will take them down. You, uh, you're probably crossing your feet because in practice when you guys circle, like when you guys shuffle around the circle, I'm assuming you guys do this, but when you shuffle around the circle, you're not in a good stance and you're not focusing on where your feet go. When you're circling left, your right foot is, like you're picking up your left foot and your right foot is pushing you over, right? You know what I mean? So when you circle left, this foot goes up, right? And this foot pushes you over. When you're circling right, this foot goes up and this foot pushes you over. Pretty simple concept, that way you'll never cross your feet. This is bad in like almost every sport. If you cross your feet, it's like very bad position because you just can't react as quickly and it's an opening for someone to take advantage of. Okay, now right here. You get wrist control for like a solid four or five seconds and you don't do anything with it. If you're gonna go for wrist control, right? If you're gonna expend the energy to control someone's wrist, you know you're only gonna be able to control it for like four to five seconds before someone like wiggles it out. You can't just hold on to a wrist and hold on to it forever because eventually your forearms are gonna burn out and like they're using, like the muscles that you, they're using to pull it out have a lot more energy than your forearms. You know what I mean? Like your bicep and elbow and back and shoulder have a lot more, like there's a lot better chance that they're, they're gonna break your grip and you can't hold on to it forever. So when you get it, you have a window of time to make some shit happen. You cannot just sit there and think because you're expelling energy. Okay, so you post again. I was doing the tie up. All right, right here. You go for a shot and you get in really deep, right? 
you didn't set it up like i mean i guess you had the wrist and like that's kind of a setup but a good wrestler would normally block with their head but point is you get in deep on a shot and you don't finish the shot because you hang out on your legs too long when you're in deep in practice correct me if i'm wrong but i'm guessing a lot of the time you shoot like to get to the single leg position and you don't finish it like you don't like actually work on turning the corner shifting the weight from one leg to the other picking it up and pulling it at like the angle where it's weakest right when I say the angle where it's weakest, my leg is really strong like this. My leg is really strong in this motion and it's kind of strong in this motion. It's kind of strong in this motion, all right? Its weakest position is when it goes back and to the left at an angle, when it's like this, right? When my leg is like this, I'm like super fucked. Your head's right here and you're pulling it, you're like pulling my hip in a way that it doesn't naturally go. So you got in deep on the leg you just didn't like you hung out on your knees when a good wrestler would pop up to their feet turn the corner shift the weight and pull that knee up you need to get better at that because you were in position you just didn't take advantage of it you guys work back up you have good pressure and then when you break you get out of your stance kind of all right, when, like, when you break, you should reset to that low stance. I understand when you, like, when you guys are in contact, you kind of pressure into each other and you build up a little bit and your legs might straighten. You need to practice when you break getting back into that low stance because if he resets and he's standing, you're already in a level change. You can just blast double him. A lot of kids, when they break, they'll stand up straight and like go back a little bit and then like get back to wrestling. You need to take advantage of that little window of opportunity. Pushed out of bounds. <laughs> okay, right here. Okay, so right here, he takes a shot. He like, uh, I don't even see if he was setting it up or not. But point being, you defended the shot. You got your hips back. Your ankles are back. You're in good position. He's reached out a little bit or he's posted on the floor. And now what you do wrong here is you try to spin around him before you control the arm that you're trying to get behind. You know what I mean? If you don't control the arm, then it's gonna get thrown up and it's gonna stop you. And what happens when you don't control that arm and it stops you is your hips get sucked underneath him. It's real easy, like a better wrestler would have taken you trying to spin around as another double leg and taking you down. So what you need to do is if his hands are on the mat, then you need to try and like get elbow to elbow with him and put it behind his hip and go for a bulldog or a cow catcher, whichever you call it. And if his hands are reaching out, then you can go for a three quarter Nelson, which is like you put a half in this way, like your arm comes in from the inside, like your arm goes in and around and behind his head. And that's another way to control the arm. Or you can go cow catcher from there too. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but as long as you get that elbow either behind his hip or above his head, you can get it. I like I don't like pinning it to I don't like trying to pin it to the ground because like I feel like like right here, I'm really strong. Like if someone's trying to push my elbow down, I can force it up. But if someone's trying to push my elbow up, I can't really force it down. It's like an alligator. Like an alligator's mouth closes really hard and it opens really soft, if that analogy makes any sense. So look right here, your hips get sucked under and a good wrestler would have popped back to his feet and taken you down. Oh, and another thing to note, your cross face was on his throat. You need to cross face. The objective of a cross face is to punish him, like basically punch him with your wrist and you're trying to torque his neck so it's in the weakest position possible. You know what I mean? You're trying to turn his head so it's in the weakest position it can possibly be in. You don't accomplish that when it's on your neck. You just kind of choke him a little bit. All right, so right here, you're working wrists. And then look, right here, okay, you break him down flat, which is good, okay? Now, what you do wrong is you let his hips get out from under you. You let, uh, like, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you're on top of someone, the first thing you need to control is their hips, right? When someone is broken down flat, you need to maintain control of their hips before you work on controlling anything else. If you want to, if you want to get perpendicular, you need to be controlling their top side. That means you either have to have an arm bar 
or a half or a two on one to work a tilt or something or you don't really get off their hips with a tilt but like ideally you have an arm bar their elbows behind their hips or a half you don't really want to get off their hips with just a wrist because they have too much mobility and it's too easy for them to get out you can't really turn someone with a two on one at all it's like really really hard and like if you do turn someone they're trash like if you let if you let yourself get turned with a two on one you are trash all right getting tilted is different because they're controlling your hips right look his hips get out from under you he gets back to his knees and you're just trying to control his wrists okay you need to work and get back behind his hips what controls his hips is your hips right so the pressure of your hips being on top of his are what stops him from getting up that's what keeps him flat. Okay, and look, you're, you're controlling wrists and like hopping sides and stuff. You're trying to get a half. But when you try to get the half, you need to have control of the hips. Like if you can get the half, that's good. But you're getting off their hips before you get the half. So like that's where you're going wrong. Can I turn? Okay. Right here you go for uh, a far side cradle. The hard thing about a far side cradle is oftentimes when you have the cradle, their head will be already torqued into the best possible position for you. Right? His head's already this way and his knees are already close. And it looks like like with like with your hips on the wrong side, you can just close it and that's like a safer option. But the thing is a leg is way stronger than your arm. So when you like when you go behind the knee he can just straighten it out and like get back into good position when you like when you decide to hit the cradle when you decide to like give him time to think about it you want to hop behind him and like ideally you get your knees under his knee and his leg is across your hips think of like the tabletop position and you walk his knee to your head okay because unless someone's knee is literally like this Unless someone is literally like this, then you should never lock the cradle without hopping sides. You're trying to do the locking motion and the hopping sides motion at the same time. You probably won't be able to do it at the same time because your hand's gonna be quicker than like your hips. But ideally you do it at the same time. Ideally it's just like that. Okay, so look. Tries to get the cradle, he strains out. You're still off his hips. Okay, you roll you roll that wrist back. You rolled that left wrist back, but you didn't get the arm bar. So like you couldn't get the half. If you would have switched that off to an arm bar, which is basically like when you roll that wrist down, okay, you take your far side arm and you stick it in this way to make a little hole and then you slip the other one in. Like as you're letting this one go, you slip the other one in to have the arm bar. Okay, so Right there, you could have turned him. When he opens his hips up like that, when he turns into you, you should be looking for a half immediately. Period ended. Okay. Right there, you get up. You're quick to get up. All right, right there, when someone's locked around your waist, you never reach for the leg because you're about to get thrown to your back. If both of their arms are underneath you and locking, then you never reach for that leg. Okay, now what happens is he doesn't throw you because he's not that good. Now look, your, your arm right here, your arm gets underneath his arm and then you can go for that shot. And then you have that single leg or high crotch, whichever side it's on. And then you can go for the high crotch or the double leg. Okay, technical violation red. Uh, I don't know what he got a technical violation for. Right there. You get behind him. That's good. See, he rolls that wrist out. When his elbow is in front of his head, you need to be thinking, put his, like when he's like this, you need to be thinking, push his elbow up above his head and get that half. However you do it, it doesn't matter whether you shove his head down, whether you pick his elbow up, whether you go elbow to elbow, it doesn't matter. The point, the objective is to go from right here 
to right here, and then sync the hat. All right, you go for that arm bar, but you don't go elbow to elbow. You can't get an arm bar. You can't move someone's elbow by pulling at the shoulder. You need to slide it up and get elbow to elbow. You get off his hips again, and look, right there you could have you could have switched your grip and put him on his back. That's something you need to drill a lot, where you go from under hooks to over hooks and you tuck his head and put him on the mat. That's an opening that happens a lot and you can pin someone like that. Okay. You try to turn him with a two on one, which is just bad wrestling. You don't do that. Like never ever try to turn a, a two on one. A two on one is a transitionary move. It is a move that is very, very like expensive when it comes to your body parts because it uses two arms. You have to use two sets of like hands, elbows, shoulders to control one arm. All right. You want to control as many things as possible in order to turn him. And you can't turn him with a two-on-one. Okay. You sink that half in deep, but you take too long to hop sides, right? By the time you sink the half in, he's already turned his hip over and he's already pressuring down. You're not even on the other side, like pushing into him. You know what I mean? Like as you're sinking that half in, your hips need to be hopping over to the other side. He gets back to his knees. You need to work on a breakdown from here. You keep on trying to control like his wrists when this like controlling wrist is a transitionary move. Okay. That is to get to some better form of control. And when like you control wrists while you're controlling the hips, you don't, you like, you shouldn't be controlling any wrists. If you're not controlling the hips, you should have moved past that position. You know what I mean? Like if you're off his hips, then you should either have a half or an arm bar or like a chicken wing or something, you know what I mean? All right, you start, I think that was a spiral ride. And good little trip. You get that half in, and the period ends. See, when you're putting that half in, you need to be running to the other side. You're spending too much time. Like, you're, you're, doing, you're doing your moves in steps, which is probably the way you learned it, but you need to hit them at once. They, you need to do all the steps at once. Look, all right, right there. You shoot and then you get the underhook, which is what I'm talking about. When you shoot, you get the underhook, you get the elbow above his hips and then you turn him over and you stick him, right? You could have done that in the beginning of the match. That was a good match from you. That was a really good match from you. And look right here, you got your headgear in your eyes. Something to help that is if you get your headgear in your eyes, I think it's because like your forehead isn't as pronounced as like a lot of people's. So like it doesn't come out as much and it lets it slip down. And something to help that is you take both of you, like you take the first two straps all the way out and you switch them. You know what I mean? So this, like you got two straps right here. This strap goes over here and this strap goes over here so that they cross and they can't get into your eyes. Helps a lot. But our boy Brandon got the W. This other kid clearly doesn't watch Isaac Gomez wrestling videos because he sucks. All right. <laughs> if you guys like that video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to post another match review tomorrow. Help me get big. Help me go full time. But until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace.